because I persecuted the church of God. He always remembered that. He regarded himself as the chiefest of sinners because he at one time had persecuted the church so severely. He says, but by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than them all. Yet not I, he didn't take credit for it himself, but the grace of God which was with me. He's saying here that he answered the call of God. God's grace was with him. And even though he had done so much damage, now, by the grace of God, he is fulfilling the purpose that the Lord had for him all along. Therefore, verse 11, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. The fact is, I preached it, you believed it, and you found out it's true, and God verifies it by pouring out His Spirit. Amen. Some people say, how do you know you're going to heaven? Well, God's given me the earnest of my inheritance. The Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's how I know. Amen. No wonder there's so many people running around that they don't know. They go to church and religions and they, they Roman Catholicism. They go and they pay their pew rental and say their rosary and put money in the box and light the candles. They don't know where they're going. Of course, they all have to burn for a while in purgatory. Their relatives have to bail them out all that kind of stuff. Hey, what a religion. Religion of oppression. False doctrine. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Say, how can anybody say that? Now, there is no resurrection. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So how about all these churches where, oh yeah, they talk about it, but they don't believe it. See, this time of the year, people are going to say, well, we got, we're in Lent now, and we got, uh, we keep moving forward. We have Palm Sunday, and Maundy Thursday, and Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, and they talk about the resurrection like it's some kind of a myth or a fairy tale, some kind of story. They go through the motions, the mechanics of it. I'll tell you what, we don't just talk about the resurrection, we experience it. Romans 8, 11. If that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will also quicken your mortal bodies. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of resurrection. Amen. You know, I, I've talked to people that, that were afraid to leave the church they were in. You know, they're Catholics, Lutherans, different people. And one guy said one time, well, I can't leave that church. Who would bury me? Who would bury me? And I said, I wouldn't worry about that. Somebody will. You shouldn't worry about who's going to bury you. Who's going to resurrect you? Now, verse 15 says, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. In other words, just as sure as Jesus rose from the dead, you would rise from the dead. Amen. And you rise from the dead because he did. Because he is the first fruits of the resurrection. Amen. 
If you believe Jesus rose from the dead, that faith is in you, that is the power that's going to raise you up. Death is not final. Amen. It's a doorway you walk through. That's right. Amen. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. You see how important it is? Everything hinges on that, that fact of the resurrection. That's the base of all of our faith. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. Hmm. Now he sums it up this way. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Wouldn't it be miserable if this is all there was? No hereafter with the Lord, this is, this is it. He'd be miserable creatures, right? That's right? This is what he's saying. We don't live for today, we live for eternity. Amen. We're moving that direction. We're getting close to it. Whether we have much or little or whatever's taken from us or whatever happens in this world, we know there's one thing they can never take from us, and that's eternal life. Crazy. So, verse 20, he says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Adam and his transgression brought forth death. The second Adam, which is Jesus, brought forth resurrection, the remedy for death. Death has a remedy. Death is curable. Amen. See, the Greeks had a hard time with that. When the Apostle Paul preached, and he preached the resurrection, the Greeks were pragmatists. They, they went by what they could see and feel, and they'd look at a dead body laying in a casket, and they'd say, oh, there's no hope. That, that, that person's gone. There's no life there at all. That person could never live again. When Paul preached the resurrection, that's when they stopped listening to him. It just was too much for them to believe. And yet Jesus proved his power. When he raised that young man at Nain, when he brought forth the daughter of Jairus, when he raised Lazarus Amen. from the dead. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God built it right into his creation. We shouldn't have any trouble believing in the resurrection. That's right. I don't have any trouble believing in it. I see it everywhere in the creation. If we can believe that a little worm will crawl inside of this little pod and be dormant in there for a while and come forth a beautiful butterfly, why can't we believe in the resurrection? Why did God make things that way? All these verifications that we become glorified later. Mm -hmm. He shall be as the angels. We're so accustomed to this human body that gives us so much trouble. But we won't have this anymore later. Lord. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We talk about Adam and how he sinned, and because of that there's death, and everybody dies someday. Well, not everybody, because those that are alive when the trumpet sounds will never see death. They'll be transformed, translated, changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. But otherwise, yes, there's this thing called death. But it's not final. And so we see 
And because of Adam, death came into the world. Because of Jesus, 